I, the legend that is Greg Friel, again on the Friel Thing podcast. Um, I have a remarkable guest. Not that all the other guests aren't remarkable, but my guest today is somebody who I've known since I started networking in the business world outside um, the music industry. And uh, we go back a ways and and he's just kind of, I don't know, slowly, not so slowly, but just taking over the, the world. Should we, should we just, should we put it like that, Craig? Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about, I am talking about <laughs> Craig McGee. Craig, welcome, sir. How are you? <laughs> Thank you, Craig. That was quite an introduction. <laughs> I thought I thought I'd downplay it a bit. Oh, you're very kind. Thank you. I'm very I'm very well, Greg. I'm happy and I'm healthy. How about you? Well, uh, that's that. I'm I'm exactly the same. I think when it comes down to it, that's really all we need to ask for more than anything else. If you're happy and you're healthy, that's it. Everything else is a bonus. So for for the folks at home, a quick thirty seconds on who you are, and dare I ask, what you do? Mm-hmm. I'm a Craig McGee. Uh, what I do is I travel, I see the world, I learn from other cultures, I read, I swim, I cycle. Um, I love to meet new people. Um, professionally, I own an events business called Panoptic Events. And uh, over the last year and a half, I also set up a coaching business called Not a 9 to 5 Kind of Lifestyle. And this is the thing that's kind of blown my mind over the you know over the past eighteen months is just seeing you do this and dare dare I say handling the whole pandemic thing with style and grace shall we say okay. um, because I mean the events industry has been eviscerated good word uh, okay, by <laughs> the pandemic yeah that's a huge word um, what's that in Scrabble and it, <laughs> it's, it's like bonus bonus points for that one um yeah destroyed decimated um by by covid um mm-hmm. and you're kind of like yeah okay yeah that's happening but you know i'm carrying on with my life and my plan and and what i was doing um uh, and what you want to do um which speaks massively to your whole mindset around this whole um, you know, concept of the not a nine to five kind of lifestyle thing. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about how that whole idea came about, and was this something that was happening already in your life? You know, this yes, you've been traveling and doing all this kind of thing, but did did the pandemic kind of make you kind of go, no, this is I'm actually just going to focus on this, and this is what makes me happy. Yeah, there's a, f- a few points to pick up on there, and I think. Um... If I go back to March 2020, or really probably more uh, February 2020, um, I'd been travelling around Europe at the time for six weeks and going to lots of shows, events, seeing what was kind of happening. And so I kind of like, you could see, obviously, oh, there's something coming. Things are shutting down. This is looking like it Mm -hmm. might get scary. And, um, but at that time, the business for Panoptic had been growing so much in 2019. Um, we were inundated with requests and proposals for events. And I usually take January off. And this year I decided, no, I'll do the work in January and then I'll go do this travel. And um, there was a period in February where there was a series of phone calls Um about six phone calls where I just started answering the phone just saying I know. Like, I didn't even get the person to tell me they were cancelling anymore. It got to that point. Um, I can share the numbers because it will come out at some point. But basically, like uh, that 24-hour period, we'd essentially taken 250,000 off the top line. When I actually went and did the actual numbers to it uh, and went back to those six events, it was actually £483,000 were obliterated from the numbers. Now... I've got a mindset that's basically living in the present and it's um, based on a lot of Asian culture in particular um, whereas if you live in the future you're anxious, if you live in the past you're jealous, but if you live in the present you're really happy and another thing I've learned not to do is deal in hypotheticals, so people Mm -hmm. might say, well if the pandemic didn't happen you would have had all these events and that would have happened, but guess what, the pandemic did happen and Basically, I just had to have that word with myself going, right, numbers-wise, this is great. It's We're following the trajectory. 
the business is growing. Yes, we're going to pause. So I was like, well, we've done something right. So let's look at mm-hmm. it. And um, so in terms of that in the present, in terms of life only dealing with what's in front of us today, that's how I operate the business. And it was like, I do 90-day planning. Um, and that's all you can do. And I got on my bike and cycled down to Bowling Harbour because I couldn't go and sit in a beach somewhere anywhere else in the world to sit. And I sat by, but I always do it by water for some reason. I just think it's therapeutic. Right, so I sat okay. down there looking down the Clyde, whatnot. And I basically wrote a 90 day plan out that effectively came down to like five key things I needed. I knew that we had to sail the ship into Cam Waters, you know, um, and basically go, right, what do we need to do to survive? What is the runway? And then on podcasts I listen to, I'm like, I love when business owners get asked, uh, or business leaders get asked, if you could go back to the start and do anything, what would it be? And I was like, ooh, that's interesting. What would I change if I went back to the start? And I wrote five things Mm. down. And one of the things was like a customer relationship management system. Another thing was just in terms of the market and what we're doing. And there were three other things. So I basically was like, these are the things I'm going to focus on, right? And at the time, I was um, reading a book by Vern Harnish called The Rockefeller Habits. And he talks about a one-page strategy plan, which i just done my first one in the first quarter of that year. And they do a thing called a big area audacious goal. And part of that's like, you'll love this, Greg. It's like, have a goal in life, right? And then write mm-hmm. it down. But the thing is, once you've read that goal, go bigger. <laughs> like, you know, so it was that whole right, bigger thing, right, go right. bigger and bigger. So I was like, right. So I wrote something down. And essentially what I wrote on that goal that was going to be the crux going forward was like to become Europe's largest events company, right? Now, we might not get to that stage, but we're going to have fun trying to, right? But what sure. that yeah. gave me was a, a marker, right? That any decision made now on that present day had to be, will it get us to there or won't it? And basically played a long-term game. So basically focused purely on what I needed to do for the business there and then. Uh, and we actually turned down a couple of bits of business. We didn't turn into the virtual world. Um, we got the setup for it, but it was like focusing on that area. Um, so that was that. Now, all the while, coming into the sort of 95 kind of stuff, or not a 95 lifestyle, the business was growing Except it didn't probably at the time have the systems perfect the way I wanted them as such now that I was now working on. What would have happened was we would have had a great couple of years, hypothetically, uh, but the mm-hmm. arse would have fallen out of that. And whether that would have been myself, whether that would have been the business, whatever else, it was just something there that had to be fixed, you know. So I just went back into it, right? I've always been quite fit and active. So I just was like, right, I don't have a swimming pool anymore, but I've got a bike. So let's do that. You know, um, I've spoken about mindset for a long time, since about 2017 on LinkedIn, where I talk about things I've been learning from other people, from talks I've been to and whatnot. And it was always getting good responses on LinkedIn. um, Mm -hmm. And people were sort of resonating with the stuff. But the thing is, it was things I was learning from speakers and going, or books or mentors and and just getting out there. I've got a wall over here full of quotes of the things I've heard. And I just started sharing it. And um, I'd met somebody on one of my trips in Athens who was encouraging me to sort of write a book almost. Um, there's a whole story behind all that. But ultimately, like, I was like, I just kept on writing stuff and, and essentially made a blog on Instagram, which then some people got in contact and were like, Craig, I like what you're talking about. Can you coach me? And it was like, all right, okay, this is interesting. Which then developed secondary learning, where I was actually learning from people who were looking for that. And actually suddenly mm-hmm. was like, oh, this is really good to hear other people. And I, I think at the time as well, with the events industry being really torn to pieces and other major scrabble abbreviation words that you can come up with, Greg. Eviscerated. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful one. Uh, obliterated. Um <laughs> I think there was a lot of people in that industry that kind of all seen me as a, quite a positive person and friends mm-hmm. that were phoning me and talking to me and like confiding in what was going on and I was just like anybody, I encouraged them to go and do their own business or follow their path in life and what makes them happy and and very quickly I was like one girl in particular, like her trip uh, to her work in London each day was four hours a day right, to, to there and back and it's like, mm-hmm. well, what are you going to do with that extra time now? You know, and hearing people who became really creative and stuff like that. So for me, that was my outlet, was my writing, you know, and that 
seem to help other people and it certainly helped myself it gave me something each day to look forward to a tiny little blog or coaching someone or whatever it was but ultimately like all I was doing was learning to focus on what I was doing to save the events business and to come out it stronger and the result of that is that I'm fitter than I've ever been happier than I've ever Mm -hmm. been you know um, I just lived day to day and amongst that period so yeah yeah I think so many people go into defense to use the American version of it defense mode you know and it's kind of it's just that panic um, and it's it's just that you know closed mindset kind of thing that fixed mindset not looking at now hold on there's opportunities here there's possibilities here and that's something that I've really resonated with with you know the, the content that you've been sharing Craig is that you're not looking at the obstacles, you're looking at the opportunities. And I say that a lot in this podcast. It's something that, you know, know, I talk about a lot. Um, But I think think that's the key. I think when it comes down to all of this is that, you know, running a business or just how you look at your life is is just, well, either you look at it like this is a problem or no, it's an opportunity. Massively. Like, at the time, like, it's a great quote from a friend of mine that you'll know as well, Andy Goldberg, who works for Action Coach, or he's mm-hmm. uh, Action Coach, yeah. So Andy, I've been to a number of his courses, and one of the things he talks about is, like, if you don't know the answer, you'll find it in four books. And I love that. Like, and, mm-hmm. you know, and that forced me to sort of read. Um, another thing, everyone in the events industry was, oh, you need to get your clients to sign deposits, you need deposits, you need deposits. So I was like... <laughs> who's going to do that right now you know it was like mm-hmm. so basically what I've done I, I've been building my supplier network across the world for events and why I'm constantly travelling so I just went straight to all my suppliers and going guys we're all in this together essentially like how are you getting on How is it empathy first and foremost how are you right? what are you doing in yeah. your country and before I knew it, the Philippines Convention Bureau were telling me what they were doing to bring their industry together. Uh, I was hearing about air filtration systems coming from brand new venues in Riga. I was hearing about the Kerry Convention Bureau and how they turned sustainability into a major uh, big uh, prize winning thing in Ireland. And so many other amazing things and innovations across the world. And I was constantly getting this feedback. So I just went through this period of just getting information, educating myself, right? And then I thought, this is really good. I could actually give this to people. So I ended up writing a couple of book, uh, uh, sorry, articles that went on to LinkedIn. I remember one night I posted the first one, and the next day I had something like 500 readers on a LinkedIn article, which had never happened before mm-hmm. for me. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. And then this, I did a follow-up, and again, it was very widely received, and I was like, oh, there's something in this. And I'm very big into thought leadership and very much into entrepreneurship, and lots but the big key to that is educating and I was going out and speaking to people and that closed mindset wouldn't have got me there the growth mindset was by the way I'm trying to build this across the world so speak to people and they were more than happy to talk and basically like that's led to what Panoptic's now done in terms of we released 10 books recently you know like plus the podcast and other things but it's all about education like, because that's the only mm-hmm. way we're all coming out. This isn't, it's, there's nobody in this world at this moment in time that's had a, a preview to this, you know, or whatever yes, had happened. Yeah. It's like, we need to learn, but we need to collaborate and come together, you know, and that's what I've found has been so good. But I've ended up so many amazing conversations and learned so much from it. So um, it's finding the opportunities and maybe something I heard mm-hmm. in the Philippines might be something we can do in Scotland. It's collaboration, that's growth mindset, and that's the way... I want people to work. And and like yourself, Greg, the background in the music industry, like we, we've been well versed in collaboration, you know, because you need mm-hmm. bands to collaborate in order to make music work essentially. So Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that and that and that's what it comes down to is kind of well it's it, it comes down to the basics. You know, those, those you know, it always comes down to that that simple thing is well, you're not gonna do this by yourself and, and you you're you've always gotta be thinking of holistically what's happening and not and not just things in isolation you know but um yeah i think that 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 was the thing that 
it really struck me with um, you know the content that you you started sharing. It was just kind of like I just constantly saw you on on your bike, literally <laughs> on your bike, <laughs> remaining remaining active and just kind of being out there and just kind of focusing on that. You know, this is what the focus is. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's that's it. It was like it was escape, a place to think, get out the house. You know, and um, mm-hmm. for some reason you weren't allowed to drive to Edinburgh, but you could cycle there. So <laughs> not that I did that, but I mean, but basically it was that I was out mm-hmm. in the fresh air in the country. But but just that one with nature as well and seeing parts of Scotland I never thought I would ever see or probably mm-hmm. wouldn't have been able to see, you know. So uh, it was, yeah. Um, yeah. So let's let's go back to the start of Panoptic. Um, yeah. And, and you know, from humble beginnings, as it were, um, and then how that's, how that's grown. And, and you've diversified, obviously, uh, over the years as well. But let's go back to the start. Tell, tell me a little bit about how that, that grew in the first place. Like you said, you know, from the early early days of being in the music industry i think yeah um i had a great career in the music industry i had a lot of fun at a very very young age and i did some cool stuff right and i worked to the highest level like my first event was like tea in the park you know that i was an event manager for um I was a booker at King Tut's, uh, so you're dealing with the best bands coming through. And then I worked mm. a number of festivals across various places, including South by Southwest in America. And it was a solid grounding at a young age because I was quite... I didn't have any goals, if you like, in the music industry. It was more, I really like this. I want to learn something else. Um, and I also DJed alongside that as well. I played for 16 years and played some amazing events and um, festivals as well. And I think, like, it kind of came to 2009, the big kind of financial crash, if you like, where redundancy happened, you know, and I had my dream job essentially taken away from me. And I kind of look back in that period going, in a way, it's a bit of a blessing because that dream job, if you like, also meant that all the other stuff that got me to that point had actually sort of ceased to exist. Despite the fact, if you want to look at it in financial terms, it's actually making me more money than the the, the, the dream job, if you like, um, mm-hmm. or the lifestyle as well. And there was a couple of years I like doing a couple of freelance things, trying to do some bits. But one thing I really liked doing was events for Red Bull and some other drinks brands. And I'd started to do a lot of that over the years uh, in music. Or oh, Craig, we're looking for such and such at this place, Red Bull event. Yeah. And... I think when I stopped one day, I was like, I kind of prefer the brand side of things as opposed to the bands. And I was like, I kind of prefer the background uh, to kind of come up with the creative concept. And so that was the kind of early start of it, around about 2009, 2010. And I kind of made that switch from bands to brands. Um, And then I was doing a lot of stuff for London agencies, but it was always the last piece of the jigsaw. And then 2014 just became crazy. Like the start of Panoptic first client was Magnus. I mean, literally, I'd made a decision at the end of 2013 that 2014, I'm starting my own thing. Whatever it is. I've been trying things with different, this is it. Yeah. And uh, January the 5th or whatever, first day at the office, you're like, <gasps> what have I done? And, hey, and, and mm-hmm. I couldn't believe it. January the 6th. Hi, Craig, this is such and such from blah, blah, blah. We've been recommended you from Sony. And it turned out to be a contract for Magnus. January the 10th, he paid half the uh, fee. Like, it was just like, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, it was a mindset thing, but it got me started, gave me confidence. It wasn't all of that shortly afterwards, but ultimately, mm-hmm. like, it was yeah, a nice yeah. bit of confidence. So, um, and that was it. I think before I was thinking we do brand led activities, which is now obviously known, or not obviously known, that's his jargon, but it's experiential marketing, essentially. And I think to get to that level for us, I had to prove that we could sell alcohol at bars to work for drinks brands, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And we started doing a few events for that. We won a few tenders early doors for uh, drinks brands. There was a lot of high risk on it, but ultimately I proved that we could sell. And I think very quickly I was like, well, we do so much work to get here. <laughs> we need to bring this back. In 2014, September... Uh, I was on holiday in a beach in Mauritius and was thinking, what I need for this business is three Magnus contracts a year or something like that, and some entertainment. Yeah, yeah. And by the end of that week, I was like, no, nah, no. Nah. But I'm still the last piece of the jigsaw. We need to be the start. We need to be the creative concept. We need to approach the suppliers. We've got the access to the lot. And just basically had that kind of confidence um, to basically start to build the supply chain. 
you know, for the right things. Um, one thing quickly led to another. You start with an idea, it develops into something else. Um, I, I went to unlearn. Um, I wanted to know what IFAs, accountants, whatever did, all these networking events we've all met at. Yeah. To, to learn from how they did their business. And then one day I was like, these guys in suits who scared me right now actually do business the same way I did it in the music industry. Whereas they might be doing this at nine o'clock in the morning, I was maybe doing it at three in the morning. Essentially, though, I was yeah. still buying the band, putting them in and selling the tickets. You know, Business is exactly the same, just depends how you make it work yeah. for you. And I kind of went away from the idea of wearing the suits almost into like, right, go dress smart casual if you like. But how do I start to get these people to understand my world and how do I get to understand theirs? So I started running socials where I would have like all business owners to come together on a Friday night once a month to talk in the bar when they would almost let their hair down and right, you know, and suddenly get to understand the people around it. And that's when I suddenly started to realise how business worked, which led to more people saying, Listen, I'm the lawyer, this is our hotel, we deal with this hotel and I was like, Great, I've never thought about hotels. So we then start booking entertainment for hotels which then was like, but the lawyers might want to do events and hotels have event spaces. That happened. Mm -hmm. Before I knew it, somebody's like, Craig, you do events in hotels, come to this show in London. You go down to London, go, no, we do these events at these hotels. And I started to learn what convention bureaus were, what uh, um, like all the kind of major like, players in the, in the uh, events industry. Uh, and they introduced me to this new world called MICE, which is meetings, incentives, conferences and events. And destinations. I was like, wow, we can actually take business elsewhere. Like, you know, and suddenly it all came from an idea that we wanted to work with brands. So Panoptic grew just by taking the opportunities, networking with the suppliers, seeing the destinations, whatnot. And along the way, like, people just referring you to different things, like whether it be you need to speak to this person or you need to go and speak to that person. And it just was like... I had a, a back-to-front approach in business where I built the supply chain as opposed to the client base. And the thing is, we got mm -hmm. really strong with the supply chain. And that's where I'm at just now. With You know, it's in the present moment, it's building the suppliers again. You know, because the clients are coming in, which is nice, but we're not doing the outbound stuff. We're basically going, right, this is what we can get. And so, yeah, it's been a... But the thing is, you've got that, that grounding and that basis. So then, you know, the clients are going to come. And when they do... You know, you've done that groundwork. You've got oh, yeah, oh, I know a guy there. We know somebody here, and it's just you know what I always say. You know, is my favorite thing to do. You know, what I do is just joining the dots. It's just bringing yeah. different people together to do you know those different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's but, funny because you never start out the same way what what you think and then how it goes. It's the entrepreneur's journey, you know, and it's the highs and the lows. And anyone listening today that's um, just um, thinking about starting something just start like even if it's writing a, something down on a bit of paper like just do that today like and i seriously encourage that like um and if you need I any help if you just, need any help you're the man to talk to no, just the thing is, but there's so many people to talk to you know like uh, out there yourself I, as well so yeah no exactly i think i think the thing is is that's the thing i come across so much with uh, you know want to be entrepreneurs as it were is you know the second guessing and and, and questioning and you know and not starting yeah. you know um what is would you say is, is there any kind of tips or anything that you would kind of give anybody in that kind of situation yes saying just start but it's, it's quite difficult if that maybe isn't your world and, and you, maybe you've come from just working for somebody else and you want to do something, either you're an entrepreneur or you're not, or maybe you just have entrepreneurial sort of tendencies. But um, is is there anything that's kind of like that, just that piece of advice just for making that, that transition, maybe going from the regular, dare I say, the nine to five into doing something a little bit different? I think, yeah, I mean, starting is obviously it comes across as very very simplified but ultimately like it is a part of that like um 
I think if people are looking at their life and like there's things that they're not happy about, it's kind of taking that step back. And so many people have stresses with so many things going on in life, totally. And they'll come down to fear factor, right? And the fear factors are like time. I don't have the time. Yes, you do. Uh, it's like uh, money. I've got job security, but you're not happy. like, And you're working mm-hmm. 60 hour weeks, you know? So all these things start to go. And it's like you're re- realizing that oh, I want to change. I was talking to a friend recently. She's like, I'm going to be uh, waiting to 40 till I go and uh, do this thing. I'm like, why are you waiting till 40? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's... Um, I, I would seriously recommend uh, the Tim Ferriss book, uh, The 4-Hour Workweek. Um, and that's not to get yourself to a 4-Hour Workweek. It's a way of being able to follow a passion, if you have one, and find mm-hmm. out what you're interested in. Um, and starting down, writing down some goals. Like question I always ask people. In fact, Greg, actually, <laughs> if you could do anything Turn. tomorrow, what what would it be? Um, if I could do anything tomorrow, anything. I, I think the short answer would be something, something creative and stimulating. Not anything. N- not anything specific necessarily, but whatever it is I do always has to be creative and st- like really like oh my god this is really getting me fired up uh, and that's basically my decision between whether I, I, I I'm going to work with a client or not you know you know how you have that yeah everyone thinks oh I've got to get clients I've got to get no. clients but I kind of flip that <laughs> into the well yeah. no I think I think this guy's going to be a pain in the ass so I don't want to work with him no, um, so a... I think you know so I, for me for me it's kind of like no I want to do the work that I want to do and that's the whole the whole point of me being self employed is that I don't want to have a job. Yeah, exactly. you know. If, so if if it feels like a job, then I'm I'm doing the wrong thing. So yeah. Um, for me, the you know when people say what is it that you do or you know what is your why? Well, my why is to do creative work that hopefully inspires people to look at things in a different way. Um, and for me, it's just. Yeah, I want to wake up and go. Yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to doing this, and it's going to push me. You know, I, yep. I always want to do work that's going to really, you know, test me and and make me hopefully, you know, try and do my best work. I always want to do my best work. No, oh, absolutely. You know? As we do, and that's that's it as well. You won't get that from clients that are making you unhappy. And one of the best decisions I ever made at the start of Panoptic, uh, I was about two years old, and I essentially went through the process of sacking all my clients. Like, um, and mm-hmm. it was because I'd went to an amazing course about it, and then I'd watched something about Tony Robbins talking about it. And if I'd followed that trajectory that early on, the business wouldn't have went and made me happy. It was following that we've said yes to everything, and then suddenly one day it's going, whoa, I actually say no, you know. And I think some people should, if they're not happy and their work or whatever is like say no to what that is like you know don't do that overtime don't be get somebody shouting at you for all sorts of stuff like that you know um i think just yeah for, find your passion in life like what that is what you're passionate about mm-hmm. and really um write that down like you know um the things you love doing you know and like can you essentially make something out of that yes you can like um some of the businesses we've both met, like we meet these people and they're like, they tell you what their business is and you're like, wow, how? But it's then you're like, that's amazing. And you just, that's really innovative and all that. And it's so mm-hmm. affirming to see that. And um, another thing going back to just, I mentioned fears there, but one thing I, I've mentioned goals in, a couple of times, like people always see goals as a, a professional thing. Um, one thing I picked up on a few years ago was making goals a personal thing uh, and I'd advise people on a Sunday to um, especially if you're saying you've not got any time write down three personal goals you want to achieve that week right so for example I'd cycle 100 miles a week I want to read a book and I might want to cook a new dish from uh, somewhere right whatever it is but I write these three things down right and then I diarise it so that's what I do first before anything else. Because I've now got what I want to do in my diary. Right? And mm-hmm. that's what, and be ruthless on it. So anyone else that's looking for things. And it could literally be they want to listen to a vinyl record they've just bought. Or they want to go a walk, um, you know, on their own. Uh, or they maybe want to go, whatever. But just write their personal goals down. And honestly, see when you get to that space, that's when you start to really think and everything else will change. 
tiny little changes all the time. Yeah, and I, I think that's the thing is that people kind of go, oh, I don't have the time for it, you know, like you say, but no, no, you do that first. And then yeah. once once you've done that, then you fill fill the spaces around your wants and needs with mm-hmm. the other stuff. And that then that becomes more, that's more of a life yeah. rather than work leading your life. And it, it reminds me of, um, I was thinking of whenever you were talking earlier on, I was thinking of that um, Simon Sinek quote, uh, when he's always uh, he talks about you know whenever you you're working hard um, for something that you know you really love that's passion um, but whenever you're working hard for something and it's like and you you hate it that's stress yeah. you know and it's creating that that distinction you know between oh no no I'm, I don't mind doing 14 hour days or whatever it is you know because sometimes it's you know people want to be busy there's people who love to be that active and that involved in whatever it is that they're doing and so other people yeah, totally. want to you know want to be kind of more chilled or relaxed or whatever but um but i think understanding the, the distinction between being passionate about something and working on it all the time and just feeling stressed because it's actually not necessarily what you want to do yeah you know? no, totally totally so you've got you've got panoptic prestige yes uh, as yes. well as well tell me a little bit about that so <laughs> this probably comes back to the client chat earlier of things that in the past were not making you happy. What I realised with some uh, like um, <laughs> Panoptic Prestige, right, is basically it's a luxury destination management company as part of the Panoptic Events brand. Um, destination management um, is for clients coming from other parts of the world looking for essentially an events management company to put together their events. I think it kind of born out of the when you were kind of chasing the kind of low uh, clients who weren't paying a lot with it giving them more hassle and stuff like that what I realised when we were doing higher end events it was a lot easier to deal with so it was kind of born out of that making clients like you know like let's do bigger fun events yeah it looked nicer but also with less stress essentially um, we were lucky that um I'd get involved in some events where like we'd booked the Ritz for example for VIPs to come and stay at and we'd done a number of VIP um, things uh, for like governments actually and delegates where we were taking on like sort of five star properties so we were dealing with like higher end uh, budgets if you like and dealing with that sort of property and um, through that we were meeting some people who were wanting to do kind of more luxury events and it showcases, in particular Scotland, where there's a lot of beauty, natural beauty, uh, which are great for like, wellness areas like and, and, and incentives. Um, you're outside, you've got the beautiful views, um, you've got amazing activities, like um, you've got castles and stuff. So we, like, there's all that sort of thing. Um, just a fascinating Scottish culture as well, great gastronomy, um, and all sorts of stuff that's happening that... We were able to put events together for like American companies coming into Scotland and basically going right. Let's do something really high end, but also let's give them that real taste of culture, you know. So that was what essentially what we're trying to do. So, but using full event design, sights, sounds, taste, touch, smells, right, the whole thing. And when I was networking across different conferences across the world, what I was finding is that we could essentially take the clients we were bringing into Scotland. Because sometimes what they were doing was picking Scotland one year and then go to Brazil the year after that and then go to Thailand the year after that. And I was like, I don't know how to put that together. Like, And that's what Prestige essentially is. It's like clients that are looking to travel, uh, whether that's inbound, as in coming into Scotland where we promote the event, or outbound mm-hmm. where we put the contacts in place and bring the actual event together outbound. And... We've been getting a bit of success with it. Um, we've had events in Dublin and Amsterdam. Um, in the pandemic, we picked up new business for an event in Bucharest uh, for 350 people at the World's Dinner. Uh, we've had three events uh, penciled just now uh, for Stockholm, Berlin, and... can't remember what other ones <laughs> came in my head there. Um, about 100 people each. So people are knowing that we're doing these things that we're able to kind of piece together. And yeah, it's like you arrive in a destination, you're picked up at the airport. From that, like we can um, 
put you up in like the different hotels, make sure there's lots of experiences in the city for you to enjoy, you know, and like really see things differently. And I'm very lucky that I've been able to experience quite a lot of that recently. Um, Budapest a couple of weeks ago, uh, two days time I'll be in Madrid doing one as well, and then on, on to Milan to do similar. So just really like pushing the kind of higher end market um, mm-hmm. for clients that are looking to come out and do it. And it's a uh, certainly a growing industry at the moment for us no absolutely so i mean you've got your 90 day plan uh presumably yep. you have your um you know long-term vision and plan for for growing growing all of this mm-hmm. um you know where do you want to be in two years time probably on a beach somewhere <laughs> I've been a beach in two weeks' time in Seabrook. I'm quite looking forward to that. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, I've got like, my vision board. I do have vision boards, right? But I've split it in nine areas mm. of my life and stuff like that. Um, I, I've got really outlined goals for the business and where I see it in three and five years and then 20 years' time, all that side of things, you know? Um and it's interesting because I don't want to be like contradicting myself in a way where I'm talking about the present and then moving into where that future is for two years' time. Like, mm-hmm. I'm enjoying the situation we're in just now. I'm loving the... Do you know what it feels like, actually? It feels like we're almost back to that start-up phase. You know, you've got a lot of mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. happening. You've got a lot of ideas, but yet the, for a period there wasn't any clients. Um, <laughs> but at least we're able to kind of take that just now. Um, reshape Panoptic, and, uh, I want it to become a... A major player in the events industry. I think personally, I want to be known as a thought leader, um, and that's one thing I've just like. I, I don't mind saying that, you know, but it's like the sort of thing that I'm learning, reading, educating constantly, wanting to get that out. Um, I want to take other people who, whether they come through Panoptic, learn, move on to other things, whether it's their own business or something else, but come through and do that. Uh, other people, friends, people I've not met yet who will become friends to encourage them to follow their path in life, you know, and I think continue to be happy and healthy. Two years' time, I'll be approaching 40, Greg. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not, I'm not be quite 40 yet, but, you know, um, I want to be quite a, yeah, being able to kind of operate a very sustainable events business, um, being able to, yeah, be, be happy in life continue my cycling still all, all that side of things you know um mm-hmm. i mean i could literally I go think... through the vegetable to show you all the rest of stuff i've got there <laughs> you know but hey there's, there's there's so much but yeah i think the thing that um is is fascinating about that though is that you know being a thought leader or, or is not necessarily an end in itself the, the fact that you are a practitioner and what it is that you're talking about, I always think yeah, that yeah. makes a difference. There's plenty of people who set themselves up as speakers in certain areas or talking yeah. about mindset and all this kind of thing, and they're not actually entrepreneurs, they're not actually business owners. They're just, you know, it, they're not people who've lived it and actually gone through it. And I think that's the thing that makes a di- difference. And ultimately, you know, the reason why you know people will listen to you because you know you live it, you breathe it. It's it's how you, how you how you live your life and thanks for that Craig I really appreciate that and it is something that um, I do live and breathe it and talk about the things that I do and it's like when I was coaching people about habits and stuff like that uh, last year like um, I was they were also asking how my bike is going and I was doing 100 miles a week every week Mm -hmm. like you know I mean I wasn't just like sitting there chilling back or whatever you know but um, it's interesting it's how you introduced that part there it was like um i've got a quote which is my screen um you, you'll have probably you, I, I don't know if you've played the 13th note or you've certainly been at the 13th note yes back yeah, the yeah, music yeah, days, yeah, the 13th yeah, note, right yeah. you know a de- for, for those that don't know the 13th note is a very kind of it's almost like a dive venue in glasgow but it's part of the the, the scene uh, coming through you have to play and it's a great space mm-hmm. uh absolutely fond memories in there but one day I went into the toilet and somebody had graffitied on the wall. And this is a photo I've actually got on the back of my computer. And it's from, funny enough, it says, be careful what you pretend to be because you are what you pretend to be. Right? And I just absolutely love mm. that quote because, like, I see that every single day, you know? And 
it's yeah. probably aimed at people that pretend and where they actually are in life and stuff like that. But for me, it's very much like it's living and breathing that. I travel because I want to. I'm going to these events because I, I can't. All these things that are starting to come together. Um, and it is practicing what I preach. Like, you know, I've got a morning routine. I wouldn't encourage somebody to do a morning routine unless I was doing it. You know, it's mm-hmm. I know I know the effects of what that's done for my life, right, and how it's worked. Mm-hmm. Uh, I talk about ninety day plans and stuff like that, and I do my ninety day plans. And Abigail, no doubt, who's our head of market, and will be listening into this. And Abigail knows that we're coming up to the end of our quarter just now, which means she's going to be heavily involved in the market inside of our ninety day plan in the next couple of weeks. You know, so mm-hmm. pulling all day bits together, which then we then give to the team. But I do that for myself as well. What do I want to achieve in the next ninety days? You know. And it's yeah. just so powerful, um, like to get that onto a wall or get it into a document or, and get that out there. But it gives you something to refer to, and then what? And then we review that, and then we optimize it. How do we get better? You know. Um, so it's like practice. I think. I think it's. Yeah, I think, and, and it comes down to being active and not just reactive. You yeah. know, you you you're like, no, that's this is where I'm. This is where I'm going, and this is going to happen. Yeah, but that's where I'm going you know and yep. having that, that that clear through line you know that's um, the, show, the, show, the show will go on Greg as always you know like another another quote for you <laughs> one that I, I was just going to say that, that's the cheesiest quote you've given us today <laughs> that's right I like using that one though but the show will go it's, on it's, I, I, absolutely <laughs> yeah and it has to I mean I think the thing is you know everybody's you know and whether that's life or whether that's events or, or whatever you know you know we're, we're going to get back to something yeah. approximating whatever you know normal there is, is. There, is, there is always another way there is always another mm-hmm. path like you know think of roadblocks diversions all the rest of it you know there's there's always another way around you might be sitting staring at it for so long and you might be stuck and that could have been stuck for a couple of years or whatever best bit of advice is just go swimming or go for a walk go for a run go so- do something go on holiday I don't have time to go on holiday. Yes, you do, because it's that's mm-hmm. where you'll get your clarity. Um, you know. Yeah, you, you you find the answers in the silence. You know, and rather rather than being surrounded by the daily noise, you know, you just kind of mm-hmm. get out there. Um, it, I I'm a, a big believer uh, in that. Just kind of getting out in nature and whatever that happens to be, or um, just finding if you things are getting stressful or whatever, then you you you've just got to do that. You know. But. Uh, Craig, thank you so much for joining me today. And um, you know, I think I think we need to can kind I of get this transcribed into like, you know, like Craig McGee's Guide to Life or something like that. <laughs> Put it first. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you so uh, much, uh, Craig. Honestly, and, uh, thank gr- you for having me. Great, great to chat to you, and uh, and all the best going forward. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. An absolute pleasure. Cheers.